Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sweet Savage Flame podcast. This is your host, Jacqueline Diaz. I'm here to talk about old school romance, everything from Avon to Zebra. Now, today we're going to talk about the passing, unfortunately, of two romance legends. Um, and I just found this out. I had not known about this previously. Um, I don't really follow the news very much. So, um, unfortunately, when I was doing research for my website, I found out that Valerie Parv had passed away. Valerie Parv, if you do not know her, is not surprising because she wrote under several pseudonyms. But uh, she published more than 70 novels and sold more than 34 million books that were translated into 29 languages, making her one of Australia's most successful and prolific authors, yet many are not familiar with her name, and that's very sad, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to read a little bit from an article. This is from Artub, uh, publishing.artub.com.au, and this was written, The Conversation. Valerie Parv passed away suddenly last weekend, a week before her 70th birthday. She began as an advertising copywriter, and her first books, Nonfiction Home and Garden Do-It-Yourself Guides, were published in the 1970s. In the 1980s, she began to publish the genre she was most well-known for, romantic fiction. Her first romance novel, Love's Greatest Gamble, was published by Harlequin's Mills and Boone in 1982, this was, as Parv noted, a book which broke a few molds at the time, which featured a widowed single mother heroine dealing with the fallout of her late husband's PTSD-induced gambling addiction. Wow, that is a lot to put in one book. Parv went on to write 56 more romances across the Harlequin imprints. With these books, she was primarily working in the genre known as category romance, most frequently associated with Mills and Boone in Australia, and sold at print at discount department stores like Kmart, Big W, and Target. So Valerie Parv wrote a Harlequin romance called Crocodile Creek. Um, I've never read it, but it looks pretty interesting. It's written here. And she also wrote a silhouette romance, The Leopard Tree, which I also have not read. And Romantic fiction is often derided as formulaic. This is especially true for category romance fiction, as publisher guidelines can dictate things like length, setting, and level of sexual content. Parv, however, firmly rejected that notion. All fiction has conventions and formula, hardly, she wrote earlier this month, not when people and their stories are so varied. And that's true. I have read at least a thousand romance novels easily and each one is different there may be some that are boring there may be some that are exciting but everyone is different and unique in addition to writing romance parv also wrote science fiction novels and a new number of non-fiction works she's the only australian recipient of the romantic times book reviews pioneer award which honors those who've broken new ground in the development of the romance novel now, Parv was unafraid to experiment in, jo in joining aspiring authors to write dangerously rather than satisfy the market and often hybridized genres in her work. She told an anecdote about her 1987 book, The Leopard Tree, which raised the possibility that his hero might have arrived by UFO. And while she received pushback on this from English Harlequin imprint Mills and Boons, the book was published by the American imprint Silhouette, when, where she would say became the poster child for cutting edge romance for some years afterwards. And I know that's true of the silhouette genre was very different from Harlequin. They were really willing to take some risks. That's what also made the Love Swept line different. They also took risks that were different as well. Um, they had time travel romances, paranormal romances, love triangles, things that we wouldn't find in the traditional Harlequin. Um, back to the article here. Completing her master's degree in 2007, Parv's thesis was inspired by a question often posed to her by aspiring authors. Where do you get your ideas? 
She explored this question in relation to both her work and the work of other authors, concluding authors often revisit themes and ideas that resonate with their own lives, whether consciously or unconsciously. In her own work, she observed a consistent preoccupation with characters resolving feelings of alienation, which she linked to her the fact that her family emigrated from Britain when she was seven, leaving her with a sense of rootlessness. Parv's career is as much a story of community building as it is a story of an individual author. An enormous part of her legacy will be the best-selling guides on the craft of writing, including The Art of Romance Writing, 1993. I have that book. Yes, I do. Heart and Craft, which was written in 2009. And most recently, her part memoir, Part Writing Advice, volume 34 million books. The title, which is a wink at her own prolific success. Uh, let me go down here. As a genre, romance fiction has never enjoyed an enormous amount of respect from outside its readership. For this reason, Parv, like her highly prolific and successful peer, Emma Darcy, who predeceased her by four months, that's correct. Unfortunately, Emma Darcy passed away uh, four months ago, and I, I want to talk about her at length afterwards. Now, um, because of that, Parv knew she would never be a household name despite her service to the Australian literary culture, a fact of which she was well aware. Despite this, she never ceased to advocate for the genre in which she made her career and in which she assisted so many others to do the same. I will never send up romance in any form because I believe in romance, she commented in the Secrets from the Green Room podcast one month before her death. I've been in love and I know how important it is to my life and how it is to most people's lives. That's wonderful. And that was written by Jody McAllister, lecturer in writing and liter literature and culture at Deakin University. That was a great article, Jody McAllister. Um, I think it's very unfortunate and it's sad passing and we'll honor Valerie Parr by reading her books. We'll have to do a review, find something. In fact, that the Leopard Tree book sounds very interesting. Space alien hero in romance. Well, unfortunately, as the article did say, uh, author Emma Darcy also passed away. And in case you don't know about Emma Darcy, Emma Darcy is Australia's top selling romance novelist of all time. In fact, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but she may be Australia's top-selling author, period. Um, I know Colleen McCullough sold 30 million copies, I believe, of The Thornbirds. But when I was looking up online for the best-selling Australian art, uh, author of all time, her name did not come up. I came, got names like uh, Leanne Moriarty, Stephanie Lawrence, Bryce Courtney, Clive James. I even got Nicole Kidman coming up on the list, but there was no mention of Valerie Parv and there was no mention of Emma Darcy at all. And that is absolutely disrespectful, but you know, that shows you how little respect Mills and Boone and Harlequin gets from everyone. They combined these two women sold a hundred million books and their passing is a great loss to the romance genre. Now about Emma Darcy, I am uh, more familiar with her works than Valerie Parr's because I'm a huge fan of hers and her sister, author Miranda Lee. That's right, author Miranda Lee uh, is the younger sister of Emma Darcy and was influenced by her sister to write books. So Emma Darcy is a very interesting woman. Uh, she began her writing career actually as the duo of Wendy and Frank Brennan. They were a husband and wife writing team from Australia. Emma Darcy wrote about 113 books in total, the vast majority for the Harlequin Presents line. In addition, she also released some Harlequin romance, full-length contemporaries, and mystery novels. Wendy was born in 1940 in Dorigo in New South Wales, Australia. She had various careers in her life, uh, such as teaching. She was reputed to be the first woman computer programmer in the Southern Hemisphere. 
Later, she met and fell in love with Frank Brennan, and in 1964, they got married. Eventually, Wendy left her work to take care of her family and children. Their life's journey took many twists and turns, just like the characters in their stories. They were both avid readers, and they decided to put their skills to work. They published their first book together in 1983 as Emma Darcy. It was the Harlequin Presents number 648, Twisting Shadows, or also published as Mills and Boone. Together, they wrote 45 novels. As a couple, they were able to add a uniquely male and female perspective to their romances. Sadly, their time together on this earth was limited as Frank passed away in 1995. After his death, Wendy Brennan continued their efforts, this time writing solo with Emma Darcy. Sometimes she would get help from her sister as well, Miranda Lee. Wendy Brennan's last book with Harlequin was the 2013 Harlequin Presents, His Most Exquisite Conquest. And as I said, she was Australia's best-selling author, whose international popularity resulted in over 71 million copies sold worldwide. She passed away on December 21st, 2020, at the age of 80. She was survived by her five grandchildren, three adult sons, and her sister, author Miranda Lee. And we just want to say rest in peace to both ladies, to both Valerie Parv and Wendy Brennan, and to Frank Brennan, who she is finally re reunited with. Um... About Emma Darcy, how can I say this? She, there were so many books that she wrote that really touched me. Um, her book, Fantasy, which was a great romance. Um, I'll tell you very quickly the plot and brief. Beautiful model comes in, sees her fiancé in bed with another man. Ouch. She's so shocked. She goes to the beach, looks at the water, thinks about committing suicide. And then a man comes out and saves her. And the man who saves her, they end up having a passionate one night stand. She disappears and goes to her next modeling job and who shows up but her one night stand. And that was a great, great book fantasy that was uh, published in 85. I don't have the Harlequin number, but it was a really great book. But, but I did do a review on one of my sites for Don't Ask Me Now. And Don't Ask Me Now is probably, if not my favorite Emma Darcy, it would be my second favorite tied with Bride of Diamonds. Bride of Diamonds was an excellent book about really, it's hard to describe it, but it's a very beautiful woman meets a very handsome man and he thinks she's very she just thinks she's very surface level they have a passionate love affair and then he gets injured and he finds out a lot more about his wife i'm sorry i gave it away they got married in the book <laughs> um but they do get married and he finds out a lot more about his wife than about her character than he saw ever thought he could so don't ask me now is very unique for a Harlequin. I'm sorry. <clears throat> very unique for a Harlequin because it's a triangle. It's a love triangle. Um, I had seen this plot initially done in a temptation line, which is more sexually explicit, but to see it done in Harlequin was a bit surprising. Now, what's the big deal? Well, this book features two heroine heroes that the heroine sleeps with, although it's not very tawdry. Um, many years ago, the heroine, Kathy, had a toured love affair with Anthony Pryor Jones. Of the Anthony Pryor Jones is part of Australia's creme de la creme of society. His parents disapproved of her as he came from a very wealthy household while well, Kathy was a nobody. So this guy, Anthony Pryor Jones, is hero number one. He was obsessed with her and they had fantastic sex, a great sex life. And finally, Kathy was able to break free because that's all they had. He would just keep her in a little, their little weekend rendezvous together and 
he would never take her out in public, and she did not want that life. She wanted a man who respected her completely. So years passed. Kathy made a new life for herself. She made a great friend and business partner, Tom. Tom is hero number two. He's always wanted Kathy, but he's been friend zone for a long, long time. Finally, when he thinks he's breaking through her icy reserve, who do they see at a ball but Anthony Pryor Jones? And when Kathy sees him, her feelings come rushing back, and Anthony wants her too. But Tom is not going to just stand by and let it happen. He demands that Kathy see him as he really is, as a man, a desirable one, who cares about her. And Tom's not willing to play second fiddle to her feelings for Anthony. He knows even if Kathy eventually does love him, he's not willing to play second best in bed. And he's very jealous of the passionate relationship she shared with Anthony. Don't ask me now, Tom, Kathy says to him, as she can't decide what her heart wants. But she must. And I'm happy to say that it was the nice guy who wins out in the end. Hero number one turns out to be no hero at all. Tom and Kathy get invited to a weekend party at the estate of uh, the Pryor Jones family. And as Anthony sees that Tom and Kathy are drawing closer, Kathy won't give him the time of day. He decides to make Kathy jealous by taking a young teenage girl out to his car and having sex. What a stud, right? So as soon as he sees Kathy walking past, what does he do? He leaves the girl, abandons her in the middle of it, and starts crying, Kathy, I love you, I love you. <laughs> it was terrible. So Kathy realizes that Anthony was a total jerk, not at all what her mind had made him out to be. It's Tom she wants, Tom she needs, and most importantly, Tom she desires. And they have a great scene at the end where they make love and they break the bed at, at, at the party at Anthony's parents' house. So they know the next day everyone is going to see the broken bed and know exactly what occurred. And this was written with such, just a right touch to keep you guessing who was the right man in this love triangle. And then when you figured out who the right guy was, you rooted for him because you wanted him to get the girl so badly. I can't imagine how this plot would be dressed in a modern Harlequin Presents or Mar modern Hale Mills and Boone. I don't want to know because the way it was done in the past was done so tastefully and so beautifully. Emma Darcy did it so perfectly. It's one of my most beloved Harlequin Presents, like I said, if not in the top 10, then top 20 for sure. And it's a shame that uh, she's no longer with us, but she's with her beloved husband now, so we have that. And we have the memory of her many, many books that she left behind. So Valerie Parv and Emma Darcy, I would like to say thank you for making romance. Well, that's all I have to talk about today. Hope you join us next time at Sweet Savage Flame. Take care, everyone.